Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Yes, this matters coming from Matthew L-I-N-Y. So why does this matter? What are we even talking about here? Well, the crypto industry helps write and pass its own agenda in state capitals. Um, Matthew L-I-N-Y just bringing this up, a post from a year ago, uh, just stating that Ripple ran crypto's most expensive lobbying program back in 2020. And uh, now here's a, an article from just the other day. Crypto industry helps write and pass its own agenda in state capitals. In the absence of federal regulation, crypto lobbyists and executives are going state by state to get favorable rules enacted. Many lawmakers have been willing partners. So it's looking like their efforts are paying off a year later, two years later. The debate took less than four minutes. In the Florida House last month, legislators swiftly gave final approval to a bill that makes it easier to buy and sell cryptocurrency, eliminating a threat from a law intended to curb money laundering. One of the few pauses in the action came when two House members stood up to thank the crypto industry stakeholders for teaming with state officials to write a draft of the bill. Guys, this is just another example of how Ripple wants to have the clarity, wants to know that they can do business in their home country and not be sued, not be charged, not be fined. Um, and so, you know, the lobbying power, the lobbying groups, this is what's turning lawmakers and um, slowly but surely really um, getting people to understand how important cryptocurrency is. So again, Ripple, one of the uh, biggest companies and uh, biggest lobbying efforts over the last couple of years. Wanted to thank Matthew L-I-N-Y just for posting that. And guys, I also saw this with regards to Wads Pay. They have selected the Algorand blockchain to power a digital asset and payments revolution for its partner network of governments, financial institutions, issuers, and beyond. And so yes, Wads Pay. I know some of you guys have been talking about Wads Pay. I've been noticing on Twitter, uh, the Wads Pay community is growing and they are leveraging Algorand, one of the six WEF coins that they outlined in their summer 2021 paper. So again, guys, these are some of the coins that uh, I'm particularly interested in following, considering, you know, first they solve problems and second, they have been mentioned by the World Economic Forum. Algorand, the leading blockchain network for fast processing final transactions, announced a strategic decision to be integrated with the Wads Pay Alitica engine. Wads Pay will leverage Algorand to develop new blockchain-based solutions for its network of partners across governments, financial institutions, issuers, acquirers, and processors. While well, blockchain solutions are gaining an awareness and relevance as a technological means to solve legacy payment pain points, real world use cases and implementations are still lagging behind the Watts Pay team, which collectively brings over 250 years of experience from corporations including MasterCard, Visa, Swift, Ripple, and GE Capital, believes that by working with Algorand to implement its leading blockchain technology on Watts Pay's already in progress projects, they will be able to supercharge adoption in the payment space. So another project to be looking into real world problems, the best way to solve for those real world solutions. And uh, you know, if people have this problem and want a solution for this problem, that's what's going to drive adoption. That's what's going to drive utility. That's what's going to drive demand to these particular blockchains. And by extension, the cryptocurrencies uh, that run on these blockchains will also be in high demand. The near term scope of collaboration includes, but is not limited to integrating WADS Pay's digital wallet ecosystem with the Algorand blockchain, exploring white label solutions, focusing on real time point of sale payments, wallet and e-commerce products for Wads Pay and its customers leveraging Algorand for remittances where license exchange houses or digital banks in various corridors are using Wads Pay's service of suites. Uh, also reinventing loyalty by introducing tradable programs on both permission and hybrid blockchain networks aimed at attracting coalition plays and utilizing the Algorand network for novel gaming and NFT projects. So we are seeing, you know, the, the companies the projects that really want to expand and really want to stay relevant are already expanding in multiple different ways for multiple different use cases, gaming, NFTs, payments. Those are some of the biggest that I've noticed uh, specifically for Algorand and the XRPL. So there are multiple proof of concept stage projects that Wads Pay will utilize Algorand for, including Asia and Africa CBDC launches, which will accelerate this blockchain adoption drive. Also just wanted to mention this down here as a blockchain agnostic company, Wads Pay will also develop a bridge allowing the Wads Pay token or WTK to be interoperable across all ERC20, BSC, XDC networks and Algorand. Wads Pay and Algorand speak the same language when it comes to payments. Our innovative approach to payments, loyalty programs and interoperability between legacy and next generation payment ecosystems is completely synchronized. Wads Pay is looking forward to adding value to Algorand by bringing years of our expertise in the payments and technology spaces while providing our partners with best in class solutions enabled by the solution that we will co-create with the fantastic Algorand team. Guys, this is coming from Anish J. 
Jane, Managing Director and CEO of Wadspay. So we are seeing uh, integration there, Wadspay with the Algorand blockchain. Two projects I know the XRP community are really interested in. There was also this, guys, from the Wrath of Kahneman, the National Bank of Egypt invested further into Fari, raising its stake to 12.54%. Among other things, the two share a Ripple connection. So here we go with regards to the National Bank of Egypt. Al Ali, Faro Securities Brokerage Company, said that the National Bank of Egypt raised its share in capital of Fari Company for banking technology and economic payments from 6.54% to 12.54%. So we are seeing now a 6% increase. The company stated in a statement to the Egyptian Stock Exchange Thursday that the NBE purchased 102.51 million shares from Fari uh, with a total value dealing in the amount of about 1.05 billion lira. Could that be Egyptian lira, L-E? Uh, not sure what that currency is with an average purchase price of 10.25 per share. Uh, it pointed out that the proportion of shares of groups associated with the bank is 0.02%. Fari Company for banking technology and electronic payments achieved profits in around 193.7 million during the period from January to the end of last September. So again, just uh, you know, to reiterate some more Ripple partners, again, these are banks. Both of these guys do share a Ripple connection. And as Wrath of Kahneman uh, even just points out here, this of course is not Ripple specific, nor does it have to do with XRP. It more underscores though, the size and centrality of where Ripple users are emerging. And I feel like, you know, at a point, we heard Ripple kind of uh, starting to get into the Middle East. And then from there, we saw an explosion of all these Middle Eastern banks and financial institutions adopt Ripple and RippleNet in Egypt, in Kuwait, uh, the United Arab Emirates, just to name a few countries. This is just another article from ArabNews.com uh, with regards to Abu Dhabi's ADQ to invest $2 billion in Egyptian state-owned stake. So several Ripple connections here in the Middle East. Wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman for pointing that out. And here, guys, some more brand new news coming from U.S. Fintech Challenger Battle Financial, they have choose Ripple-enabled Temenos for their banking cloud platform. So Temenos, the cloud banking platform, recently announced that Battle Financial Inc. has selected Temenos Banking Cloud to underpin the global market's technology stack for Battle Bank. Temenos, guys, this was a big partnership uh, with Ripple uh, six years ago. This was one of the very first uh, bigger kind of mind-blowing partnerships that we saw. Temenos T24 integration is a big milestone for Ripple. So Temenos, this is a company that integrates technology into all the big banks and uh, at that time they wanted to integrate with RippleNet again from six years ago 2016 now we are seeing Temenos core banking and payment solutions battle bank uh, and how they will enable to offer their clients a diverse set of opportunities in FDIC insured foreign currency and market index deposits and the ability to acquire store and borrow against non FDIC insured precious metals Battle Bank is expected to launch in the second half of this year, pending regulatory approval. The bank is led by two pioneers in the banking industry, Frank Trotter and Vincent Amato. Both were part of the former group of founders of everbank.com. Uh, Frank Trotter, president and board member of Battle Financial, he stated this, we've created Battle Bank to fill a widening gap in the traditional banking landscape to offer high yield interest accounts coupled with access to world markets. To make that vision a reality, we need technology that is fast, open and scalable. As we continue to grow our offerings, this partnership with Ripple-enabled Temenos will provide exactly that, making our clients' experiences as seamless and efficient as possible. You're only going to be able to do that with a Ripple-enabled product, and uh, Temenos has now been providing that value for their clients for about six years. Temenos' platform for composable banking will serve as the foundation for Battle Bank's foreign currency, market index, and precious metals products as well. So we are seeing that transferring value, precious metals, currencies, right? It's all going to stem from the RippleNet product using Temenos' model bank methodology and the pre-composing bank services, Battle Bank will be able to quickly roll out its world markets division, offering innovative solutions with hyper-efficient cost structures. And here's just another quote, guys, uh, from Vincent Amato, Chief Operating Officer at Battle Financial. He remarked uh, this, we are building Battle Bank to offer exceptional banking values and unique investing offerings. With Temenos, we know that it's possible to launch fast and scale quickly. The unprecedented breadth, depth, and scale of the platform's modular banking capabilities creates opportunities for our customers to prosper through a diversification of financial holdings with us. So diversification, financial holdings, being able to extract value, 
from one asset class and perhaps transfer it to someone else in another asset class or the same asset class, or maybe even convert it to something completely different. This is all possible utilizing DLT technology and uh, Temenos Ripple enabled has been since 2016. So that's some great news there for Battle Financial integrating with Temenos. Also saw this guys from Mike Manfield here on Twitter. The service is initially being launched in the US tapping into Finastra's expansive network of over 5,000 financial institutions. And we know Ripple is a partner of Finastra and they are making moves with none other than Microsoft. Finastra has formed a banking as a service or a BAAS collaboration with Microsoft to provide access to finance for SMEs using Microsoft Dynamic 365. Under the collaboration, users will be able to unlock lending options with Dynamics 365 using information already stored on the business management platform. Finastra says the ability to provide banks and additional information, including accounts, receivable, and payable records, will improve lending decisions and time to cash for SMEs. The service is initially being launched in the US, tapping into Finastra expansive network of over 5,000 financial institutions. So in theory, by extension, we can see all these 5,000 institutions becoming RippleNet enabled through Finastra's expansive network. Angus Ross, Chief Revenue Officer and BAAS at Finastra, he said, this lending proposition for Microsoft Dynamics 365 demonstrates the huge benefit that embedded and contextual finance will bring to the industry and the communities within it. The embedded finance platform will integrate with open APIs as well through Finastra's Fusion Fabric cloud and is expected to go live in the summer guys of this year 2022 so more expansion through ripple partner finastra unlocking lending for microsoft dynamics 365 users through their platform expanding to over 5,000 new financial institutions that will be running through finastra system so some more great news here wanted to thank mike manfield for posting that and considering we are seeing all these ripple partnerships considering we are seeing more and more how um you know the web of ripple net integration is building worldwide through companies like Temenos, through companies like Finastra, and even, you know, banking, smaller banks like in the Middle East, uh, National Bank of Egypt, for example. We are seeing all these partnerships. We understand that XRP utility is going to be at the core of RippleNet usage. All things of value can be transferred over the XRPL. So how important is the XRP cryptocurrency really going to be? If it's moving all the money, some would argue that, yeah, it's going to be one of the most influential cryptocurrencies moving forward. It's not going to be the only cryptocurrency. However, it is going to be in the top. One of those coins, again, that the World Economic Forum mentioned in this study, in this document from June, 2021. And so when we think about it in the world of finance and when we think about the XRP coin, uh, in terms of a financial framework and in terms of a financial infrastructure, it's got to be a possible ESDR, right? I've done videos on the SDR, including XRP in that possible basket. And I'll see if I can find one of those older videos that I've done. And I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner. But XRP World also brought this up. I did not know that the Hoover Institute, Stanford University also mentioned XRP as a possible ESDR, special drawing rights, an electronic version. Imagine what that would do to the price of XRP. And uh, guys, the document is here. I will link this in the description. Digital currencies, the US, China, and the world at a crossroads. Again, from the Hoover Institute at Stanford University. So a very in-depth study here. Uh, and again, copyright 2022. So this is brand new within the last three months. And I'm just gonna isolate this portion here. Again, I will link this in the description, but just to kind of get to my point here, it is possible to envisage even more adventurous arrangements. For instance, a special drawing rights based stablecoin issued by a multilateral agency, reminiscent of John Maynard Keynes proposed supranational currency bank core which would be exchangeable with any national currency could thus be convertible into any other national currency in two steps via the stablecoin. Now they're already discussing this uh, inevitability of uh, the value of exchange, you know, being able to exchange value through other means. Well, now we have RippleNet. Such an arrangement would resemble the cross-border payment system that Ripple currently operates with its XRP cryptocurrency and is just one of the variety of possible alternatives. Any democratic alternative should allow for private sector solutions. Multi-currency corridors, for instance, should not rule out the use of regulated private stablecoins or cryptocurrencies, even though such solutions might require additional regulation as discussed below. And for some more in-depth information, guys, uh, this was done by Anders L. back in June of 2019, Ripple's connection with the IMF and central banks. Uh, so in this blog post, he does uh, go over the SDR, uh, Bretton Woods, 
Let me just read you guys a little bit of this. What is the connection between the IMF, central banks, and Ripple from analyzing different speeches by Christine Lagarde, the head of the International Monetary Fund? At that time, she was the head, along with witnessing Ripple holding meetings and appearing on meetings for central banks. I have a strong suspicion that there are deep involvements between these entities. So this, uh, before we really kind of knew the, um, really how in-depth the connections were with Ripple and the IMF, he's just going over some of the connections that he noticed at that time. Uh, what I wanted to bring your attention to was just down here. The first conference of discussion in this article was the Bretton Woods at 75, celebrating the IMF and World Bank turning 75 years old. Here we gain some interesting information from the panel discussion by name, Rethinking International Cooperation. Uh, this clip here is on YouTube and it is embedded in this article, guys. I will link this in the description. The focus was on the US dollar as the world's reserve currency and uh, is something that is less than optimal for the global financial system. So again, this was back from 2019. Fast forward to today, post-pandemic reality and well here's where we are the second message that was given throughout the panel discussion okay was that there is a need for a more equal power structure between major currencies the usd the euro the renminbi which effectively would mean a reduction in the global role of the us dollar let me just go down here what sparked my interest was the mention of the triffin plan and the Keynes plan from the conference we can imagine a new expanded role for the imf by adapting and modernizing some old ideas of what's called the Keynes plan and the triffin plan if you look up the definition of the Keynes plan as well as the triffin plan you'll find something interesting an alternative set of proposals for international monetary institutions proposed by john maynard Keynes at the bretton woods negotiations on post-war monetary arrangements in 1944 the Keynes plan would have involved the creation of an international monetary unit, the Bank Corps. The plan was rejected and the International Monetary Fund was set up instead on lines proposed by the United States. Also just down here, the Bank Corps was a supranational currency that John Keynes conceptualized in the years 1940 to 42 in which the United Kingdom proposed to introduce after World War II. Also something that Anderzell notices here, a supranational currency was then part of the Keynes plan. Now, here is something additional that also caught my attention. XRP was labeled a supranational currency in an official document discussing digital fiat currencies, DFCs. Uh, this is displayed in the document on the second page where XRP is described as such. And guys, this is a great paper. Anders links everything I'm noting here. Uh, and so I will link this in the description of the video if you want to read further. Uh, again, a very in-depth analysis and his two cents on this. So I mean, even if XRP is not part of the ESDR, we certainly know that it is going to be the cryptocurrency utilized to exchange value. The Hoover Institute, though, sees that this possibility could become a reality considering why RippleNet was designed and how the XRP cryptocurrency is so efficient at what it does. It provides liquidity, exchanges value, anything of value for that matter from point A to point B. And this is going to be the new world in which we live in. We've already had a need for this, but more and more as the economy grows more global, the purpose and need for cryptocurrencies and blockchains like the XRPL are going to increase dramatically. And for payments, again, may I reiterate, XRP, one of a handful of cryptocurrencies listed here in the WEF's paper, along with Stellar Lumens. So is it possible? Again, another institution, the Hoover Institution from Stanford University, proposing that an ESDR could be on the table and will it be this cryptocurrency central to exchanging value in a new financial system? Liquidity, 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 right? This is first and foremost on Ripple's mind and this is why they're providing solutions for that. The liquidity hub, the line of credit, just to name a few, all signs are pointing to something very, very special happening with the XRP cryptocurrency. But that's just my opinion. I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.